say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's bright glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true nor strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for Good afternoon, a warm welcome on this deservedly beautiful day to faculty, staff, trustees, distinguished guests, family and friends, and most of all, the class of 2017. I am Ray Rice, and I have the honor of serving as the president and provost of the University of Maine at Presque Isle. I'm here to welcome you to an extraordinary occasion as we join with the members of the class of 20, 2017 in celebrating their accomplishments. In doing so, we also celebrate the exceptional individuals who helped today's graduates get to where they're sitting right now. The faculty and staff, the family and friends, all of you have helped these students succeed in so many ways during their undergraduate experiences. Truly, today would not be possible without the months and years of support, guidance, instruction, mentoring, and friendship that you have provided the class of 2017. It truly does take a village for the university to succeed, and I'm grateful to all of those who have worked to make today possible for each one of you. To paraphrase the bard, Shakespeare, we experience today with a bit of defeated joy, with one auspicious and one dropping eye, one with a little tears coming outside, with commingled exhilaration and with more than just a modicum of loss and apprehension. And that is because the class of, 20, of 2017 is truly one of the most inspirational and outstanding collection of graduates ever to have come through the University of Maine at Presque Isle. For these graduates, traditional students, adult learners, commuters, online students, have accomplished so much and given so much 
They have indeed taught us so much during their time with us and done it with such commitment and vigor that I am truly optimistic about the future of our institution, our county, our state, our nation, and our global community. Your class, reflective of your generation, shares values that our society needs now more than ever. A dedication to public service, a genuine concern for the environment and for sustainable living, tolerance of different views and lifestyles expressed through civil discourse, and an understanding of the importance of collaboration across and within communities. Who you are and what you have learned at Presque Isle has made you well equipped to face any challenges and develop any opportunities. Your degrees in professional programs and the arts and sciences supported by the backbone of a liberal arts education have given you the tools and skills complementing your own innate inquisitiveness and ingenuity to thrive in this changing world. And as you explore that world, remember the time that you spent here. Recall those who pushed you in the right direction and stretched your imagination and spirit. Keep in touch with each other and our, and our university and always remember that this community and this campus is a place that you can call home. So welcome to the greatest day so far in this institution's great history, the 108th commencement of the University of Maine at Presque Isle. Before we get fully underway, I'd like to introduce the members of the platform party behind me. Um, and if you would stand, if, if you'd like to, please, uh, as I call your name. State Representative Dave McRae, District Number 148. State Representative Dustin White, District Number 146. Vanessa Pearson, our Dean of Students. Deborah Rourke, the Executive Director of University Advancement. David Buckingham, our Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Affairs. Barbara Blackstone, our Dean of the College of, Ar of Professional Programs and Education. Jason Johnston, the Dean of our College of Arts and Sciences. Carl Michaud, the Chair of the Board of Visitors. Norman Fournier, the Board of Trustees representative with us this afternoon of the University of Maine System, and a great advocate for higher education in Arista County. John Estrada, our commencement speaker and former ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Lawrence Park, this year's honorary degree recipient, a local historian and an Arista County farmer. and Tom Weyer, President of the UMPI Alumni Association. Each year we invite the class that graduated 50 years before yours to our commencement ceremony. We are especially proud to recognize one of those members that is with us today. Please stand if you'd like, Rachel Gilmore. I'd like to see all 126 of you standing there 50 years from now, so. It is also my honor to recognize that group of individuals who have been singularly dedicated to the source, to the success and accomplishments of all of you within the graduating class of 2017. An inspiring, devoted, tireless collective of teachers and professionals, scholars and artists, who have committed themselves week in and week out, both inside and outside the classroom, from first year seminars to advanced level research, field work, internships, and senior shows, each one of whom has dedicated him or herself to ensuring that you, this year's graduates, gain the skills and abilities necessary for success in all or whatever comes next. A truly remarkable group of educators, mentors, and friends, the faculty of the University of Maine at Presque Isle.
It's my special privilege to introduce to you the faculty emeriti and retirees who have served with distinction during their service to this university and remain such essential members of our community. Clifton Budman, Guy Gallagher, Royal Goheen, Malcolm Coulter, Linda Graves, Suzanne Baudet, and Christine Standifer. On a more somber note, it was with great sadness that I informed the UMPI community this spring, just about a month ago, of the passing of Jan Koch, Professor Emeritus of Music. Jan retired in 1987, but he was an especially welcome and reassuring presence at nearly each and every graduation between his retirement and his passing just this spring. Jan and his wife, Evelyn, who passed away uh, a couple years prior, came to our university in 1952, when it was then known as the Aroostook State Teachers College, and were to serve, respectively, as music professor and librarian. Jan was born in the Netherlands in 1921 and was spending time in the United States at the outbreak of the Second World War. His parents were literally on the last boat to leave Europe in 1940 to the United States. He and Evelyn were married in 1950, resided in Presque Isle for the remainder of their lives together, where they touched countless lives of all ages in Aroostook County and far beyond. Together, they were founding members of the Presque Isle Recorder Consort. John also, Jan also established the Hilltop Carolers and the Wren Bar, specializing in Renaissance and Baroque music, which is near and dear to my heart, and was involved in the Kiwanis Talent Review for over half a century. In addition, Jan was awarded a year-long special sabbatical through the State Departments of Maine and New Hampshire. That's collaboration sent, uh, decades ago before it was a, a popular term to use to develop and instruct a music instruction and music instruction series on commercial television to provide access to the performing arts for all high school students in rural areas lacking music instructors. This was long before the university main system became known for its distance education, before any organized means of distance delivery, and even before the establishment of public television. Jan truly was a pathfinder, as well as a passionate advocate for music education. He would be sorely missed by this university and the communities that we serve. We are fortunate this afternoon to have Anatole Wick, our wonderful musical director for so many of our commencements, perform the following work in memory of Professor Emeritus Jan Koch. <laughs>
Norm Fournier will bring greetings to the graduating class of, 20, of 2017 on behalf of the University of Maine system. Trustee Fournier. President Rice, Representative McRae, Representative White, honorary degree recipient, Mr. Park, former Ambassador Estrada, platform guests, faculty and staff, family and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2017. Good afternoon. I am pleased to bring you the greetings and best wishes of the University of Maine System Board of Trustees. My fellow trustees and I are volunteers who are appointed by the governor for a five-year term to oversee Maine's seven public universities. It involves a considerable amount of time and energy, especially the past couple of years with the financial uncertainties. But it is very rewarding, especially each May when we have the great privilege and honor to participate in commencement ceremonies. As a product of the University of Maine system, I take particular joy in participating in these ceremonies. I find university commencements exciting, but the one here in Presque Isle is uniquely so, because the county is my home and because of what this, this institution represents to the people of Northern Maine. As most of you will agree, UMPI is moving forward with strength and vitality. And the University of Maine system, and in particular, the University of Maine in Presque Isle, is so fortunate to have Ray Rice at the helm. His dedication, his commitment, his vision, and leadership is very evident for this campus. For that, Ray, thank you. On this special day, we are celebrating the achievements of a co core group within this community, our graduating students. Each one has worked hard to reach this point, often juggling the demands of jobs and family life to get here. I am certain that each graduate would agree that they could not have made it this far without encouragement and guidance from others, most notably their families and friends. And of course, UMPI's dedicated faculty and staff. This day represents an achievement for them as well. Now that you, the 2017 graduates, have been given the tools with which to build the rest of your lives, it is up to you to seize the opportunity. Your future is in good hands, your own. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the University of Maine of System, I wish every graduate the very best in the days and years ahead. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Mr. Carl Michaud, the, the chair of the Board of Visitors, who will now greet the graduate.
Thank you, President Rice, and thank you for inviting me to graduation today. I'm very pleased to be here to join you in celebrating this wonderful occasion. Humphrey's Board of Visitors is an advisory board to the president of the university and serves as an advocate to the, for the University of Maine System Board of Trustees. The group meets, studies, evaluates, and makes recommendations to the trustees. We also review proposals and fiscal and operating plans, as well as serving as advocates of the university to promotion and understanding to the media, general public, and state legislature and agencies. On behalf of the Board of Visitors, congratulations to all of you. You should be very, very proud of yourselves for accomplishing this goal. Well done. I know you must be all excited to get your hands on your diplomas, so I'll be brief in my comments. As you move into this new stage of life, in which you are a leader, a doer, and an achiever in this wild world, I would like to offer a few words of advice. Number one, do your work. At work and in a life, do your work. In fact, do more than what's required of you. Look for opportunities to help others and to serve your community and family. It's one thing to have drive and ambition, but it's another thing altogether to roll up your sleeves and get to work. Number two, challenge the norm. Many people today follow others almost automatically, often they do so because they desire to take the path of least resistance. They leave it up to someone else to forge the path. Other times they fear rejection and stay with the majority. Then there's the classic belief that there is wisdom in the fact that everyone else is doing it. If you're truly looking to fulfill your purpose, live into your full potential, you need to consider what's best, not what's popular. Challenging what's popular requires a willingness and desire to live outside the norm and forge new ground. It requires strength, faith, and hope to be a leader, not a follower. In your work life, you will most likely hear, we have always done it that way. As an answer to one of your questions, as you learn the procedures of that organization that hired you, challenge that statement. Find out why it's always been done that way, as the answers may surprise you. I have a personal example. A young woman was preparing to cook ham for Easter dinner. As she went about the steps that she learned watching her mother prepare the same meal, she cut the ends off the ham before putting it in the oven, packing the ends on the side of the pan. Her new husband and his family inquired as to why the ends were cut off. The young woman responded, my family has always done it that way, but I'm not sure why. The next day, she called her mother to inquire about cutting the ends off the ham. Her mom responded, it was the way her mother had done it, so she did as well. So she then called her grandmother and received the same answer that her own mother had always done it that way. The young woman, not satisfied with the answer, went to visit her great-grandmother. The young woman inquired, Nana, why is it that our family always cuts the ends off the ham before baking it for Easter dinner? To which Nana replied, I'm not sure why my daughter and granddaughter do it, but I had to do it because my roasting pan was only this big. Number three, practice common sense. I can hear you thinking, practice common sense. What do you mean practice common sense? Common sense is, well, common. I used to think that way as well until 15 years ago, a man by the name of Bill Meyer, who I consider one of my mentors, changed my mind about common sense. I was in Bill's office one day, complaining about the work of others. Bill listened quietly as he always did as I ranted away about the lack of common sense and that other employees should just get it. When I was done, Bill nodded his head and questioned, common sense, huh? Well, there's your problem. As I turned my head, thinking about what, he's, what he meant, he went on to say, well, common sense is an oxymoron because sense is not that common. Of course, he was making a comical statement, but his words stuck with me, for you see, Something that society deems as being common sense, and therefore everyone should be able to do, needs to be taught and practiced at some point, so that it becomes second nature or common sense. Well, take the opportunity to practice common sense, things such as balancing a checkbook, setting a dinner table, changing a tire, checking your oil, understanding your paycheck stub, and my favorite, using Netflix to the Wii Entertainment System, my teenage daughter said, Dad, it's common sense, let me show you. So please take the opportunity to learn 
and practice the sensible things in life so that you can make your sense, well, common. Congratulations. Thank you. been a privilege to work with Carl this year because he uses so much common sense. <laughs> now, in recognition of the strong bond between our faculty and our students, the chair of the faculty assembly, Dr. Jackie Lohman, from a great distance, the associate professor of professional communication and journalism, will now greet the graduates. President Rice members of the platform party, honored guests, and most especially, members of the class of 2017. Greetings from the faculty. I'm Jackie Lohman, AKA Dr. J, Chair of Faculty Assembly. This is Saint, my service doc. Around Umpy, I'm probably better known as Saint's mummy. Saint and I are very sorry that we can't be there with you in person today. We're in the Carolinas, hiking the Appalachian Trail. But we're extremely grateful that through the wonders of technology, we can be there with you on behalf of the UMPI faculty members. They're an extraordinary group of dedicated, hardworking, brilliant people who are totally dedicated to student success. They're also very accepting and tolerant. Honestly, I'm surprised and humbled to be among them. I'd like to take a moment and ask them to stand so that we can acknowledge them and all their hard work. We'd also like to give a special shout out to our colleague, Kim Ann Perkins, who is retiring this year. So please join me in some applause for the faculty. Great, thank you. My colleagues are such an awesome group. So it may be hard to believe that many years ago, we were a lot like you as you began your journey to higher ed and encountered challenges. In my case, it was because of my physical challenges, but all of my colleagues have heard their share of can't, probably like many of you. But most of us were also incredibly lucky. We always had someone who believed in us. Those people said, why not try? So we did just like you. And we got that education just like you. And it's education that's made everything possible in our lives. That's why we're here for you. Education can open any door. When you couple that with hard work, you're invincible. So on behalf of my colleagues and saints, let me congratulate you on your achievements and earning that education. Now build on that and go out and change the world. We all can make a difference. We all can be that difference. Let us start today. And now Saint and I will go back to our head. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce to you this year's commencement speaker, Mr. John L. Estrada, the former United States Ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, a national leader who has served our nation with dedication in his military and diplomatic posts. He was nominated for his ambassadorship to the Caribbean islands of his birth by President Barack Obama and served from 2016 to 2017. As the president's personal representative, he was responsible for furthering the U.S. Diplom diplomacy interest in the bilateral rela relationship with the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Estrada enlisted in the U.S. Marines in 1973 is the recipient of numerous commendations and honors, including the Navy Distinguished Service Medal, the Bronze Star, the Navy Presidential Unit Citation, the Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, and the Meritori Meritorious Service Medal with three gold stars. In 2003, he assumed his post as the 15th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, the highest enlisted rank. Mr. Estrada retired from the Corps in 2007 after 34 years of service. Mr. Estrada also served as Senior Manager for Lockheed Martin Training Solution Incorporated and as Commissioner on the American Battlement Monuments Commission. 
the guardian of America's overseas commemorative cemeteries and memorials from 2010 to 2016. Please join me in welcoming this year's commencement speaker, John L. Estrada. Dr. Rice, Ms. Pearson, State Representatives McElwee, White, and McCree, distinguished faculty, trustees, administrators, families, friends, and more importantly, the graduating class of 2017. Good afternoon. What an honor and pleasure it is for me to stand before you, this promising 2017 graduating class at UMPI, to participate in this significant event in your lives here today. Thank you so much for bestowing this great honor upon me. A few months ago, while serving as our country's leading diplomat in the country of Trinidad and Tobago, I had no def definitive knowledge or facts about Presque Isle, Maine, even though my wife is from Maine. But I was warned it was a bitterly cold place to be in the winter and even into the spring. Keep in mind, as I was dating my wife, she never brought me to the state of Maine during the winter. Okay, we came during the spring, the fall. So now, and I, I was born in the Caribbean island of Trinidad and Tobago, lived in Florida after retirement. So now imagine my predicament. After running outdoors almost daily, I'm an avid runner, golfing at least two days a week, uh, during the, all of last year in the Caribbean. And I ended up here in late January, <laughs> totally shocked. My wife said, honey, I did not mislead you. So I quickly discovered the university's gym right here would help keep me in shape physically and mentally, and I have used it quite a lot. Now let me address this magnificent graduating class for a moment. That you are here today, ready to walk across this stage to receive your diplomas speaks volumes about your character. You didn't give up, even when you were challenged. You kept showing up, even on the tough days. You believed in yourself, even when others may have discouraged you. You took charge of your future, even when it would have been easier for you to sleep in, in those very cold days. You displayed courage, commitment, and dedication to making a positive difference in your life. I applaud you for making those tough and wise choices which brought you this, to this exceptional achievement in your lives here today. You have every right to be proud of what you have accomplished, something only approximately 33% of adults 25 and older in our country have achieved, according to the 2015 Census Bureau. I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to acknowledge the parents of today's graduates. Parents, you too have a lot to be proud of today. You have raised some outstanding young men and women by ingraining in them the importance of education. You supported them financially, and you will probably continue to do so for a few more years, and emotionally, and just as important, you have instilled in them the discipline to succeed. Kudos to you all for a job well done. So what did I really come here to share with you as you prepare to move on to the next chapter of your exciting lives today? Strangely enough, the topic was an easy one for me. It has been an 
important part of my professional and personal life ever since I became an adult. The difficult part though, was finding the time to organize my thoughts because of my hectic travel schedule, even though I am now retired. So you're probably wondering what travel schedule? You just said you retired. To be honest with you, about 90% of my travel since coming back home in late January from Trinidad and Tobago, it had everything to do with me running away from the brutal cold and snow <laughs> which Prescott and most of Maine have experienced. It was tough on me. So what did I come here to uh, share with you? The topic I chose to discuss today is civic responsibility, civic responsibility. This is a topic each of you will have an opportunity to explore in a big or small way, or either quietly or publicly. Whichever way your impact will be felt, hopefully it will contribute to making a positive difference in everyone's lives around you. Those opportunities will be found in your communities, workplaces, at the state and national levels, and possibly internationally. Issues such as the economy, to include international trade, terrorism, immigration, healthcare, climate change, human rights, national service, such as either the military, the Peace Corps, diplomacy, maybe holding public office, and also promoting and defending freedom of speech and democracy. And there are many other areas which are not as popular or sexy, but which can be equally significant and rewarding, such as improving educational opportunities in communities where it is lacking, assisting senior citizens, assisting to provide meals for those who are less fortunate than we are, working with those who are disabled physically or mentally, and I can go on, but I don't need to because by now I know you have got it. I can speak to and give advice to you on many, if not all of the topics I have mentioned, but I will need a couple of hours, and I know that none of you would find it amusing if I did. So I will share just one story of civic responsibility and I would ask that you really pay attention to it because it's my story on civic responsibility. Most of you, if not all of you by now might be aware that I am an immigrant to this great country of ours, arriving in Washington DC in March of 1970. Yes, I look younger than my, my, than my age. But I was only 14 when I came to Washington, D.C. from Trinidad and Tobago, which was considered back then to be a very poor third world country. Like most immigrant families coming to the United States, my single mother came here legally two years prior looking for a better way of life for myself and my siblings. Within three and a half years, after arrive, arriving in the United States, I joined the United States Marine Corps in March, excuse me, in September of 1973 to serve my adopted new country. Keep in mind, our country was at war in Vietnam at that time, and I was a green card holder at that time. I want to emphasize those two points. I'm sure again, some of you are saying, okay, what's the point? First one, as a green card holder and not a citizen, I had no obligation to serve, none, zero. I did not apply for citizenship until I had been serving in the Marine Corps for 16 years. The second point, as I mentioned, the country was at war in Vietnam, very unpopular war. Our citizens were protesting against the war from coast to coast. That was another reason I had, I could have said, 
I'm not going to join the service. I'm not going to join the Marines. But guess what? I did. And I joined before my 18th birthday. Little did I know then that I would serve in our Marine Corps for 34 years of continuous active duty service, participating in the invasion of Iraq in March of 2003, and subsequently selected over all of my peers in May of 2003 to be the Sergeant Major of the United States Marine Corps and as the president mentioned, the 15th in the history of the United States Marine Corps. This selection and assignment during a time of war for our country was indeed a deep honor and truly humbling experience for me. My service with the American Battle Monuments Commission. I was one of the 11 presidential appointees. Every president will appoint commissioners to oversee those cemeteries and memorials worldwide. I advocated for those who had fallen in battle in defense of our nation overseas and are interred in those countries where they fell in battle, those American cemeteries overseas. How did I do this? By being proactive and kept pestering and bothering our elected representative in Washington to ensure that besides the politics and the partisanship that goes on, they need to take care of these cemeteries and memorials worldwide. So those that had fallen are never forgotten. My service with the Defense Advisory Committee on Women in the Services. This is a committee that advises the Secretary of Defense on readiness of the US Armed Forces. It's over 60 years old, getting close to 70. On that committee, I was the only male on that committee, the only male, retired as Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. I advocated for the equal rights and opportunities for all service members, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, religious affiliation, or on behalf of those who were injured in combat. I advocated so if there was a way they could still serve, we didn't just throw them out, we allowed them to serve. And I'm proud to say the Marine Corps was the first service to do this in, uh, in 03. It's important you remember that today's military members, those that are serving in the military, are the less than 1% of Americans, less than 1% that serve so that we all could enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today, less than 1%. On immigration, given my experience as an immigrant and the overall positive impact immigration has had on our great nation, this is another issue that is close to my heart. In these turbulent times with divisive partisanship debates on immigration in our political arena, I think it's important to be engaged on this issue. You need to be engaged on this issue. Last year, I was named by the Carnegie Corporation of New York as a 2016 great immigrant honoree. The pride of America, along with 42 others, you look across the country, to look to the whole United States and look for immigrants that have made a positive impact on the United States. I was honored to be one of those. Okay. And this is published in the New York Times every July 4th. So I want you to remember it's important that the rich contrib contributions of immigrants and what they have contributed to the greatness of this country since our country's birth are not forgotten. My contributions as an example would probably not be possible during this turbulent time. I may not have even been able to immigrate to come here to contribute. Possible, something to think of. As the United States ambassador back to the country of my birth, that was the most humbling experience. 
and but it showed the greatness of the United States of America. A poor immigrant coming to the United States of America was given the opportunity to have a great Marine Corps career, become the 15th Sergeant Major of the Marines, and to go back and represent his country back to the country of his birth as a top U.S. diplomat. That shows the greatness of the United States again. While there is ambassador, my advocacy to end child marriages in Trinidad and Tobago, yes, they still had child marriages going on in that country, which obviously is an internal issue. This was a very controversially, highly charged emotional issue for some. I use my position, my civic responsibility to influence and weighing on that issue. Why did I do that? Everyone is listening to the United States ambassador in whatever country it may be, but especially one that was born in a country that's back serving. So of course I weighed in on this issue. It, it, it made some of the country's politicians there, they quickly uh, outcasted me, said I was out of place, I was not being a good diplomat, and I was meddling in their internal affairs. Some diplomats get kicked out of countries because of that. It did not discourage me at all with continuing my advocacy for those young girls who were being married off to grown men. I saw this issue as condoning statutory rape and violations of the basic human rights of young girls. That's how I saw that issue. And I went out on the limb and I advocated on it. Guess what? Right after I left, the law was eventually changed in Parliament, making it illegal as civic responsibility. <laughs> so what I just described is an example of only one individual's demonstration of and passion of civic responsibility. It is my story how I stayed engaged and made a difference. You too can make a difference by getting involved and being engaged in shaping political and social issues. You too can be bold and daring to not just be a bystander. You too can speak up for what's right and just, not just what's popular. Be a champion of the truth, facts, and transparency. Help educate those who might be misinformed. Civic responsibility means commitment to a cause that will affect you and your communities. It means having moral courage. It means getting involved because it is the right thing to do. It means being a leader when it's your time to lead. And believe me, you will know when it's your time. It will not always be easy. It will be daunting at times, but you must not give up because giving up is the easy thing to do. Learn how to persevere to meet those civic goals or commitments. This will take courage. You have already proven you have what it takes to be responsible and engage. Is the reason why you will be walking across this stage momentarily. That's why you're sitting here. I want you to remember this is your world. This is your future. You must make your voices and actions be heard on the relevant issues affecting you and your communities. Hold those in leadership positions accountable for their actions. You could do that. Be their conscience by being engaged in the issues you might have a passion for. Your passion may be in education, may be in healthcare access for all, may be in immigration. It could simply be you going back to your community or another community to volunteer and give back. It could be service in our armed forces or the Peace Corps. It could be providing for those, again, who are hungry or homeless. It could mean seeking and serving in public office at the local, state, or in a national level. Ask yourself, what can I do to give back to my community or country 
in either a small or big way. As you prepare to move on to this exciting big world that awaits you and your contributions to society on the relevant issues of your time, I would like you to remember these words, which I often emphasize to my Marines, my embassy staff, and my employees at Lockheed Martin Training Solutions Incorporated. I used to say this all the time. Treat everyone you come in contact with, respect, dignity, and compassion. Everyone, mission first, people always. One can't go without the other. You're not gonna accomplish that mission first if you're not taking care of your people first, okay? Leave it better than you found it. What am I saying here? If you go to a workplace, you take over a business, you, you're president of a university, your goal should be leave it better than you found it. It's important that you remember the past, but you honor the present and you prepare for the future. These are things that I, I always passed on to my employees. So with those words in mind, I do have one request for you in regards to the most basic way you can demonstrate civic responsibility. This request has to do with honoring your part in our democratic governance process. Last November, voter turnout here in the United States was the lowest in decades. While voting is a right and not an obligation, it is our duty to vote. Even at times when the candidates and issues are less than ideal, it is still our responsibility to vote, okay? The apathy which led to the silence and non-participation by so many voters in November will not help shape a better United States of America because they were silent, they were quiet. They didn't contribute to your richness. If you and others are not satisfied with the candidates running and the views that they represent, there are other ways to demonstrate your disappointment apart from abstaining. It's important to remember, again, very important to remember, millions, millions have served in our nation armed forces to preserve and protect our democracy, give you that precious right to vote, which many countries do not have. And many of them have made the ultimate sacrifice for that. It's important you remember that. They have made that ultimate sacrifice for this noble cause called democracy. Best wishes to all of you. Job well done here at UMPI. Now get on out there to whatever is awaiting you in the years ahead and make that positive difference. Again, thank you for allowing me to address you on this very special occasion. Thank you. Thank you so much for those inspiring words. It is now my pleasure as president of the University of Maine at Presque Isle to present an honorary degree to Lawrence A. Park. This is the first degree of the afternoon. So we're now moving into that aspect of uh, this celebration. I would ask David Buckingham and Deborah Rourke to come forward and assist me. Lawrence A. Park is a well-known farmer, conservationist, and local expert on the history of UMPI in Aroostook County. After serving in the U.S. Air Force, he became a potato farmer, woodlot owner, and served as a supervisor of the Central Aroostook Soil and Water Conservation District for 30 years. He took on many leadership roles over the decades, including with the National Potato Promotional Board, the Rural America Bicentennial Planning Committee, the Small Woodland Owners Association of Maine, and the Aroostook County Extension association. He is also part of a long legacy of Park family members who have been integral to the life of this campus. Park is the steward of the Reverend George M. Park Scholarship, which was established in his grandfather's honor by his uncle Clinton DeWitt Park. Both are the athletic fields known as the Park Family Field and a dormitory Park Hall were named 
in the family's honor. I would now like to read uh, the citation uh, that we have for him conferring this honorary degree. Lawrence A. Park, agricultural and conservation leader and champion of higher education, you are commended today for your service to the people of Aroostook County and to those involved with agricultural and conservation efforts throughout the state. As a decades-long proponent of the region's potato farming community and conservation initiatives, you have worked through your roles at the local, state, and national level to represent and advocate for Northern Maine. Your work as a farmer, woodlot owner, and conservationist have served as a powerful and inspirational example of the work one can do to make a difference in the community and the region. Your efforts to use your own land to provide environmental education opportunities for young people and to provide winter recreational opportunities for the community are to be commended. As part of a long legacy of Park family members who have been integral in the life of our campus, your passion for and support of this university has been unwavering and has provided generations of students and community members with exceptional educational opportunities. Your work has made an important impact upon the people of Arusta County, the state of Maine, and beyond. In appreciation of your outstanding service and in recognition of your status as a dedicated public servant, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa. President Rice, dignitaries, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. This is a surprise really for me. And uh, I compare it to one of my history uh, stories that I, I write that took place about 80 years ago about Alphonse. They lived in Presque Isle, lived on Chapman Street. They worked across the Presque Isle stream at Millican Sawmill. Anyway, he. The shortest way to work was just to walk across the log boom to the mill instead of going clear down around with a bridge. One day after lunch, he got back to the mill and the crow sitting on the board pile having a smoke looked at him and says, Alphonse, you're all wet. <clears throat> yeah, he says, funny thing happened today. He says, I walked that boom across that river there for years. And he said, today I got halfway across me and he said, I heard a great big splash. He says, I turn around, take a look, and by gosh, he said it was me. <laughs> the point is, keep a little humor in your life. Uh, <clears throat> I've been recognized for conservation work on my soil, best management practices on my tree farm. Now it's your young graduates' turn to kind of take care of the planet and uh, think about that. You got your degrees, you'll get your good degrees today, and you'll think about going out and having a good living. Also think about going out and having a good life. You'll enjoy your work more. You'll probably work harder because you enjoy it. The world will be better for it. Take care of this world, enjoy this world. Take some time when, uh, where you can go where there's no light pollution sit on the porch of the camp, look across the river, look at the stars, pick that one out right there by the top of that tree, sitting and relax for half an hour. You'll look again and that star's down about three branches. Well, that's kind of, what, therapy at the camp, I guess. Uh, <laughs> 
they just give me a short time to talk, so uh, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate a Finnish speaker. So now I'm Finnish. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Park. It's truly an honor. It is now that time of the afternoon where we prepare for the presentation of candidates for your degrees. I will now ask Dr. Jason Johnson to come to the podium. Good afternoon, and now the part you've all been waiting for. Uh, at this point, we'd like to give you 10 or 15 seconds to stretch out, maybe stand up and uh, as we head into the next part of this. I'd like to remind the graduates and everyone else that the graduates, when you walk across the stage, uh, you'll be pinned down there in the corner. We do have a professional photographer uh, who will be taking pictures of every graduate and we'll make those pictures available to you somehow as well. So before I get started with uh, going through the graduates, I would like to once again give one more round of uh, acknowledgement to the faculty. Today is really about you students, but it is also a chance to acknowledge our faculty. Um, and I will say that our faculty are among the most accomplished, hardworking, and student-centered faculty anywhere. Let's give them a really big round of applause. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Biology please rise and come forward. Cole A. Guyberson. James A. West. Samantha Marie Fuller. Chelsea Lynn Simons. Caitlin May Belanger. Summa Cum Laude, United States Army veteran. Caleb Timothy Hobbs, magna cum laude. Janelle Kirsten Sewell. Victoria Bouchard, cum laude. Ashley Lauren Johnston. Mallory Susanna Patton. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration please rise and come forward. Aaron Kathleen McKenney. Nicholas Eugene Lenhard, magna cum laude. Danielle M. Thibodeau. Sabrina Marie Haney. Cassidy N. Mitchell, magna cum laude. Tyler Conrad Prue. Tyler Brooks, cum laude. Dean Lee Clavette.
Brady W. Rowe. Zachary Turner. Joshua Houston Cross. Sarah Margaret Sullivan. Faven Bacal. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice please rise and come forward. Darcy Caitlin Fay. Erica Kaylin Hempel. Summa Cum Laude. Idella Pearl Thompson, magna cum laude, campus to career distinguished graduate. Scott A. DeLong, magna cum laude. Joshua Michael Morrow, magna cum laude, campus to career distinguished graduate. Jordan Shepard, magna cum laude. Eric Steven Deppner, cum laude. Jamie Margaret Sear, cum laude. Craig D. Pullen, cum laude. Theodore W. Gilliam, summa cum laude. Chrisania Harley Walker, magna cum laude. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in English please rise and come forward. Bradley A. LaFay, magna cum laude. <laughs> Melissa Lazat, summa cum laude. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in History and Political Science please rise and come forward. Dylan L. Hackworth. <laughs> Michael Eugene Dobbs, summa cum laude, United States Army veteran. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Psychology please rise and come forward. Chelsea Farah Porter, summa cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Berrio. <laughs> Jessica Michelle Lizot. <laughs> Anisha Marie Lucille Hersey. <laughs> Lainey May Merchant. Alan Michael L. Jones. <laughs> Megan M. Boyce. <laughs> Melanie Jean Ross, magna cum laude. <laughs> Tammy E. Boyce. <laughs> Kaylee M. Pelletier.
Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science please rise and come forward? Deborah Lynn Jones, cum laude. Anne Marie Steed. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts please rise and come forward? Monica Amber Quist. Molly A. Hicks, magna cum laude. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Liberal Studies please rise and come forward. Carla Jo Halverson, summa cum laude, physical education. <laughs> Madison Michaud Hannigan, cum laude, early childhood education. <laughs> Kirsta M. Wilhide, physical education. <laughs> Courtney A. Terrian, cum laude, early childhood education. Danica L. Welton, Criminal Justice. Loretta Cody, Magna Cum Laude, Educational Studies. Renee Michelle Larson, Early Childhood Education. Joseph Robert Ladd, Human Services. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Athletic Training please rise and come forward. Jordan S. Cook, magna cum laude. Sydney Alexis Churchill, summa cum laude. Katerina Alicia Jensen. Madeline A. Ireland, cum laude. Caitlin Rogine Dow. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education please rise and come forward. Michelle Marie Tardif. Vanessa Ann Hodgkin, magna cum laude. 
Misty Lynn Stewart. Kylie Marie Alton. Amanda Lee Holtham, magna cum laude. Karen Laura Cody. Mackenzie Lee Bollier. Jacqueline Marie Garrity. Mallory Catherine Sear. Lydia M. Strines, magna cum laude. Olivia L. Garrison. Martha Ann Schools, magna cum laude. Samantha Marie Terrian. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Environmental Studies and Sustainability please rise and come forward. <laughs> Andrew Justin Dolly, cum laude. Dean Tyler Costello. Nathaniel Richard Norris, magna cum laude. Daniel James Swallow. Bobby Joe Oatway, magna cum laude. Sully Tyler Jackson, magna cum laude. Christopher Staples. Raymond Thomas Kohuka. Caleb William Ward. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Physical Education please rise and come forward. <laughs> Physical education. <yeah. laughs> Abigail K. Jewett. Adam Edward Bigos. Derek C. Healy. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education please rise and come forward. Margaret Alice Hart, summa cum laude. Colby R. Cook, cum laude. Lance Peter Albert. Miranda Lois Bickford, magna cum laude. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Social Work please rise and come forward? Jessica Morno, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Kelly Lee Osgood, cum laude, campus to career distinguished graduate. 
Michelle Lee Post, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Miranda Lee Davenport, Magna Cum Laude, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Michelle Amy Rockwell, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Jill Ann Marie Story, Summa Cum Laude, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Haley Ann Grant, Summa Cum Laude, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Caroline Patricia Newman, Magna Cum Laude. Lyric Ann Foss. Alicia Ferguson, Magna Cum Laude. Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Katie Ann Young, Summa Cum Laude, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Paige McKell Chandler, Campus to Career Distinguished Graduate. Hannah Grace Boyce. Veronique Bouchard. Will the candidates for the degree of Associate of Arts please rise and come forward. Emily Renee Dumont. <laughs> Jessica M. Cameron, Magna Cum Laude. Amaya Suzanne Whelan. Kayla Joy Murchison, Magna Cum Laude. Lori Ann Smith Duty. Donald Francis Collins, Jr., cum laude. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Associate of Science please rise and come forward. Autumn Lynn Poulin, Magna Cum Laude. Mackenzie Nicole Palmer. Morgan Celine Roy. Jessica Dawn Tucker, Cum Laude. Philip Peter Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Samantha Taylor Netto, Magna Cum Laude. Henry Godian. Mitchell Vaughn Wheeler, Summa Cum Laude, United States Air Force veteran. Ashley Lynn Mertz. Will the candidate for the degree of Master of Education in Counselor Education, degree awarded from the University of Maine, please rise and come forward. I don't need that. Patricia Kathleen Armstrong.
Will the graduates please rise? President Rice, I have the honor to present our students who have been judged by the faculty of the University of Maine at Prescott, worthy of degrees of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Applied Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Studies, Bachelor of Social Work, Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, and Master of Education. I did that job for like four years. It's not an easy job. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Maine System and confirming the action of our faculty, I hereby grant unto you the appropriate degree of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Applied Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Studies, Bachelor of Social Work, Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, and Master of Education, together with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may now move your tassels from the right side of your caps to the left side, signifying you are now college graduates. You may be seated. We only have, have uh, one more hour to go, and then you guys will be. <laughs> we do have one more speaker, though. At this time, I am pleased to introduce to you Tom Wire, a 2008 graduate of this institution and the current president of the Alumni Association, for some parting words to you. Good afternoon, members of the class of 2017. We're almost done and I won't be very long at all. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the University of Maine at Presque Isle Alumni Association, I am honored to welcome you into our association as our newest alumni. You are now officially an alum of the University of Maine at Presque Isle. I've noticed that um, you're a pretty special class. In the last year, I've read about the student organization of social workers organizing a pack out event to end hunger. I read about education students leading an educational technology workshop in conjunction with the Central Aristic Council on Education. I read about students already serving as speakers for UMPI's distinguished lecture series, and much more. I've had the opportunity to see some of your work. At University Day, I was incredibly impressed. I saw passion for your work, deep knowledge of your research, and your outstanding ability to describe it in terms that even I could understand for the most part. Also, UMPI's new Campus to Career initiative recently gave me the opportunity to meet students who are deeply driven to serve communities and improve our industries. So I can honestly say, that I'm greatly proud to call you fellow alumni. As UMPI alumni, you now belong to an exclusive network that goes back to 1903. It's a network with impressive experience and connections. Alumni members are making an impact in almost every industry and service you could imagine, from the secret service to professional sport. I'm here to give you one simple piece of advice, leverage this network we call the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association is governed by a dedicated group of board members who are once like you, poised for this moment between college and your future career. 
The board sets direction for the association, builds programs to support alumni, and assists in planning alumni events. So how can you get started and stay connected with your alumni association? Three ways. Number one, homecoming. It's a great opportunity to re-engage with your alumni network and have a blast at the same time. This year, it's the first week in October, so mark your calendar and stay tuned for more info. Number two, join the UMPI Alumni Facebook group. That'll give you access to information about your alma mater and your classmates. And number three, check out our uh, Where Have Your Wings Taken You page, yourwings.umpi.edu. It's another way to keep in touch with fellow alumni and we'd love to hear you share your story now that you've earned your wings. So we're looking forward to hearing from you and where our alumni association can help to take you. So please keep in touch, stay tuned, and one last time, congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association. At this time, I would like to have you join us in singing our university's alma mater, Rise Up, Press Guile. The words are found in the back of your program. Are they in the back of my program? Oh, look, I'm with Jason. Singing? There we go. I hear the lifting of our wings Take to the sky as sons and daughters Our voices echoing Like owls flying above the fields Be heard, be heard Above the crystal waters We are the sons and daughters Of you may rise up for sky From this nest of steel and stone Take to the sky, your sons and daughters For the memory of home Owls flying above the fields Be heard, be heard Above the crystal waters We are the sons and daughters Of your main rise up for sky Raise the glass together, sing. Take to the sky, you sons and daughters. A choir of queens and kings. Owls rising above the fields. Be heard, be heard. Above the crystal waters. We are the sons and daughters of the main rise up the sky. We are the sons and daughters of the main rise up the sky. It's good singing from the faculty there. Now there's a little tradition and you can entertain this if you wish. I just ask not to poke anybody's eyes out or other parts of the body. So if you wish, there's a tradition of tossing of the cap. So this is an appropriate time to do so if the students would wish. So I'll go one, two, three. There we go. <laughs> now that was impressive. There we go. Our facilities and maintenance staff, thank you for that last gesture.
I'll be in the gymnasium for a while for anyone who likes to have a picture taken with the president or any other members uh, of, the, uh, of the stage here. We have a stage area this year set up outside in the flag court for photo opportunities as well for faculty and other individuals, family, etc. I remind you, there's a reception immediately following in the campus center to which everyone is invited. Please come up and enjoy uh, the, the afternoon's activities up there. Once again, thank you everyone. My congratulations to the proud class of 2017, the University of Maine of Prescott. <laughs>